in Matthew chapter 5 today, 13 to 16. You know, it's not my nature to preach hellfire and damnation sermons, but if I could do that, this would probably be one of them I would do that way. This is still a sermon on the mount. These are words of Jesus. This is what he says, Matthew 5, starting with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under by, underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, how many of you believe that this world is better now than it was Ten years ago. Anybody? Okay. Uh, for some of your older folks, how many of you believe that our world is better off now than it was 50 years ago? Anybody? Okay. Is there anybody that thinks our world is better off now than it was last year? Okay, maybe if you uh, like the present president. Uh, we live in a decayed world, don't we? Evolution is not happening. We're not getting better. De-evolution is actually happening. We are going downhill fast. Evil and corruption seem to be growing. Things are not getting better. They are getting worse in our world. In fact, someone has even said we're in a downward spiral. Last Sunday we looked at the Beatitudes. And if you missed last Sunday, I hope you will go back and, and read the Beatitudes. Just read the first 12 verses of Matthew 5 and you'll be okay. The Beatitudes are what give us and make us character and righteous. Our character gives us integrity, and our integrity makes us believable. Gives us a believable witness in our dark, corrupt, fallen world. The only hope for our world that's so dark is the light of the world, Jesus. That's all. That's why it's so important for us to be salt and light in this world. If I could boil down the meaning of this message into one word, it would be the word influence. Influence. You see, that is the function of believers. It is our responsibility to have an influence on our dark, cruel, evil world. And today, sadly to say, you can't really tell the Christians from the non-Christians because they're all pretty much the same. And you can't really tell the church from the Elks Lodge because it's pretty much the same. We've got to be different. Jesus called us out of the world. He wants us to be different. He wants us to have an influence on our dark world. Christians are to always be making a difference in our world. We make a difference in this world because we are different from this world. At least we're supposed to be. When we become a Christian, 
and embrace the character of the Beatitudes as a way of living, we become disciples. Because we are following Jesus. Disciples are God's way of changing the world. Think about it. Even in the book of Acts, it says the disciples were responsible for turning the world upside down. Can we say that today? I don't think so. So what is the difference in us? We are to be salt and light in our world. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was not asking for volunteers. He said, you are salt. You are light. We don't have a choice. If we're a follower of Jesus, we are salt and we are light. What Jesus meant when he said you was that Christians or the church are to be the salt and the light in this dark world. When Jesus said you are, he was putting, on, putting the emphasis on being rather than on doing for a good reason. You see, you can't really do what you're not. So if you're going to be salt and light, if you're going to make a difference in this world, you, you've got to be a follower of Jesus before that can ever happen. You've got to be before you can do, Jesus said. The person who has become righteous, taking on the character of these Beatitudes, you see, can be and is, in fact, salt and light. We miss out on the importance of what Jesus was saying today because we don't really consider salt and light that important. We just take it all for granted. But you see, in Jesus' day, there was no light switch to flip on. There was no string hanging from the light to pull to turn it on. <laughs> and there was no salt shaker sitting on the table to put on your food. In Jesus' day, there was not the abundance of the man-made light that we experience today. There was no real preservative or seasoning of food without the salt. In fact, salt was so important in Jesus' day that a lot of the Roman soldiers received salt as their pay. It was that valuable. How would you like to be paid in salt today? See, salt doesn't really mean a whole lot, does it? Being righteous makes us salt and light. In other words, being a Christian makes you salt and light in the world whether you want to be or not. The question is, what kind of salt and what kind of light are you going to be? Let's look at salty salt. There are three things I want to talk about. Salt is white, suggesting purity. Salt is a preservative. And salt adds flavor. Those three things. We use salt in our water softeners to purify the water. Jesus said, you're following me. You've got to be holy because I am holy. There's got to be some purity in our lives. We've got to be different from the world. Salt is a necessity of life. It's necessary for us to be different from the world so that we can win some of the world to Christ. If we're like the world, <laughs> there's not much we can do to win them, is there? Because they're already like us in the first place. Salt means we should search and seek to be pure and holy. Salt's also a preservative. It makes our food last. It's 
stops corruption. Salt stops the corruption of food. It keeps it from going bad. Oh, yeah. Pioneer days, they didn't have refrigerators, of course, and so they salted everything. You know, you'd see pans hanging up, and they were, they were salted and curing, and they lasted for a long time. Salt makes food last and stops corruption. In our world, that is speeding to hell, you and I are to slow things down. We're to slow the moral decay and sin down by giving people opportunities to change. Become different from the world. Start, salt is supposed to stop the process of decay in our world, just like it stops the decay and corruption of, of meat. Followers of Jesus are the spiritual preservatives of the gospel. The gospel of salvation. Mm -hmm. That's the only hope this world has. Salt also adds flavor. I don't know about you, but I like to have a good time. I like to laugh and, you know, party as a Christian. Not the way the world parties sometimes. I like to party so in the morning I don't have a hangover. Christians are to add flavor to the world and bless others by the kindness and the things that they do. The last verse of our text said that we're to, to practice good works so that other people see them and want to know more about Jesus. <laughs> they glorify God when they see us doing some of those things, witnessing, serving the Lord. We're adding flavor to life. Christians ought to be happy. They ought to be the most joyous people around. <laughs> they ought to have a smile on their face and joy in their heart. <clears throat> For salt to be effective, it must penetrate into the meat. You know, if, if, you, if you like to, to grill out and cook a, cook a good steak on, on the grill, <laughs> You know, don't you oftentimes marinate it first? You don't just throw it on there right out of the package. You put it in stuff to, to marinate so that flavor gets down in that meat. That's the same way with Christ. He's got to get into us. We've got to be in the places where He can penetrate and get in. We've got to marinate ourselves in Jesus. Give ourselves some flavor. <clears throat> Has Jesus Christ gotten deep down inside of you? Or do you just wear him on the outside? See, it makes a big difference. Well, let's go to light. Light shines. Light has to shine. While salt is inward, light is outward from us. Light reveals truth and it focuses on the obvious. But light does no good unless it's being shined. When light is shined, all can see because of it. Imagine a world without light. You know, some of you have been in caves and that's kind of what you like, I guess. Without the light of Jesus, <coughs> And the light of Jesus' followers, the world would be lost in darkness and in sin and corruption and in evil. See, the goal of being salt and light is that others see us and our good works and glorify the Father. Good works do not save us. What saves us is what Jesus did on the cross. But if we're saved, we are supposed to do good works so that other people can get, give God glory for it. See them in us. 
evangelism is only effective if it's consistent. And especially if it's consistent with our living. If it's not consistent with what we're living, then what we're saying and what we're living is different. People will see through that. Christians must remain Christ-like to be effective. Yeah, sure, we're gonna we're gonna slip up, we're gonna we're gonna fall. But over the whole course of our life, there's gotta be some consistency there. Being salt and life and light requires that we live the life and we speak the truth. So all can benefit from the influence that Christ has made in our life. Didn't Jesus Christ make a difference in you? If he didn't, then something's wrong with you. Because Jesus Christ came into this world to change us. So that we could change the world. Peter Marshall told a story about a keeper of a water spring that supplied the water to a town in the Alps of Austria. The town paid this older gentleman to maintain the spring by removing branches and leaves and, and debris that got into the spring that ran down the mountain into the town. Supplied the town with its clean, fresh water supply. This was done by the man for years. But as the years passed, the village council met for their semi-annual meeting, and they were looking for ways to cut the budget. Someone noticed that they were paying some guy up on top of the mountain to take care of a spring. They said, well, oh, we don't need that, so they cut it out of the budget. Well, a couple of weeks later, the town water became a little discolored. And as time went on, it began to smell. And even because even looked brown. There was a film over the top of their water. People noticed dead fish. And some of the people even began getting sick. The town council called an emergency meeting. And they rehired the man to take care of the spring up on the mountain. It wasn't long until they had their fresh water again. Because he was taking care of the spring way up there in the mountain somewhere. What the keeper of the spring was to that town is what Christians are to this world. But you see, if we're not taking care of the spring, the world's going to suffer for it. That's why it's so important for us to be salt and light. Salt can purify the water. Light can shine on the truth. What is the difference? You and I practicing the Beatitudes and living a Christ-filled life can and will make a difference in this dark, evil, corrupt world. That's why Jesus told us this. He knew this would happen. And he even, he even said that if, a, if, if the salt has lost its saltiness or tastefulness, it's not good for anything. If you and I as a Christian give up our Christianity, give up our faith, we're not good for anything, you see. Even Jesus knew you could lose your salvation. Even Jesus knew you could lose your faithfulness. We are living in a very, very dark world. It's even darker in other places than it is right here. You know, we live in the Bible Belt. I guess if there's anything good about that, it's that it's a little, a little lighter here. A little more salt here for maybe. But just because we live in the Bible Belt doesn't mean 
that we're going to be okay. You see, we still have work to do. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. That's kind of interesting because he also says, he is the light of the world. He wants us to have the light of life, John 8 and 12 says. When it comes down to it, we really have no light of our own. Just like the moon has no light without the sun, we have no light without Jesus. Followers of Jesus are just, we are just reflecting the light of Him. Of him. But if we are living by the Beatitudes, then we're going to be reflecting the light of Jesus wherever we go. Because those Beatitudes are the very character of Jesus Himself. Light is to, to dispel the darkness in this world. There's some interesting information that we know about a light in the house in Jesus' day. It was a lamp filled with oil, probably olive oil. And that lamp was put on a lampstand in the house in a spot where it would give out the most light to the whole house. It's probably you just had one. And something we probably don't really realize is when they left the house, they didn't put out the light. They didn't have their big that they could flick. <laughs> they didn't have, you know, a, a match that they could strike. <coughs> it would not be that easy to light that lamp when they came home at dark or whatever. So what they did, they covered it up with some kind of a basket, some kind of a container that wouldn't put it out, but it would just make it burn a lot less so they didn't lose and use up so much oil. So when Jesus here is talking about that, he says, You are the light of the world, the city set on a hill can't be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. You don't light a lamp and put it under a basket, you light a lamp and put it on a stand so everybody can see. You see, some of us are under a basket, some of us are under a container, some of us are keeping our light from being seen by other people. That's not what Jesus was talking about. He says, we are salt. We are light. And light is supposed to shine. Jesus' point was that you don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl. You light a lamp so that it lights up the whole house. Light was not meant to be hidden. What this means is that we are to shine our light for Jesus, not to display ourselves, but to display Him. Because that's who we're reflecting. So you see, if we're hiding our light, what are we doing? We're hiding Jesus. That's what we're doing. And He doesn't want to be hidden. He wants everybody to see Him. So we have a big responsibility to shine our lights so everybody sees Jesus in us. We are a reflection of Him. And if we're not reflecting Him very well, that's the picture they get of Jesus. Our light is to be visible like a city set on a hill. Have you ever been flying after dark and you look out the plane window and you can see the whole city, you can, you can see the streets, you can see all the lights. We're to be visible in this dark world so that people see Jesus. Well, wrapping it up here. To be effective and useful salt, we must be salty. And light, we must shine. Salt is good for nothing if it isn't salty. And light is good for nothing if it isn't shining. Jesus says, 
there is a danger in losing our soliness and in hiding our light. There is no such thing as a secret Christian. A Christian can't help but show the character of Jesus. A Christian can't help but show the character of these Beatitudes. The danger of not being salt and not shining our light is that we can lose our salvation. Do you see how important the Sermon on the Mount is? Do you see how important it is to try to make your life have these qualities and these characteristics that Jesus talks about in the Beatitudes? Pretty important. The world will trample on those Christians who are not salty, who don't shine their light. Because we're good for nothing. They'll trample on us. We're going to sing an invitation to him this morning. It's an opportunity for us to make a difference. If you don't know Jesus, you need to because he is who you're going to reflect. As you be salt, and as you be light. I don't know where you're at right now in your relationship with the Lord, but it probably could be better than what it is. Use this time as we stand and sing to work on that. Thank you.